So in this video, you're going to learn how to navigate the portal. So to get there, you're obviously going to be given the URL from your um, from your store owner. Um, so to log in, we're going to use our last name, our first name, and we're going to use the password that's been given to us. So we're human and log in. Now this is the default kind of dashboard for the portal. Uh, basically the main thing is at the top here, you can see the balance that's due to you. Um, and that's uh, basically uh, how much money you've made. Uh, so we're gonna click on my account over here and we can actually change our contact information. We can go here and click on payouts. So this will show our previous payouts that we've had made to us. We click the view button and we can print those payouts and it'll just show everything that we sold. We have transactions, which are just the adjustments made to our account. So in this case, it's going to show payouts mostly, but um, a couple of refunds in here as well. Let's close that. And let's go to our items. So we click open my items. And this is the default view. So the default view is our selling inventory. So we can actually change the number of items that we can view. So if we have a very large um, catalog of items, we can change how many we can see on the screen because we do have to limit what's shown so it keeps the, the browser speed up. So in this case, I don't have very many, so we're just going to leave it at the default 150 items. Um, if we are set to vendor, we can actually create items. So you can see the create button up here and the alter button. Those are available for vendors. You have to be turned on as a vendor. Um, um, the, the store owner has to do that. Um, Otherwise, we just have the ability to see our inventory. So in this case, we're a vendor, so we can create and alter items. Right now, we don't give you the option to delete. We are going to look at adding that option at some point. Um, but to kind of make sure that items ring up at the register and control that, we don't right now currently let people delete items out of here. You need to contact the owner uh, of the store to delete items. Um, one thing that we're also beta testing is Avery labels. <laughs> Avery labels are... Basically, we're doing a one inch by one inch currently. We're going to be adding more labels um, as we go. But right now, we want to limit what vendors have to do, you know, what they need to invest, you know, hardware wise. So Avery labels just work on your regular printer. So uh, rather than having to buy a new label printer, um, Avery labels will allow you to just use your existing printer. Um, so if we let's take a look at uh, how to create items first. So we're going to click create. And the SKU is going to be generated for us. We're going to select our location. We're going to give a description. Select our category. Uh, brand. It's going to be me. It's like quantity one. $9.99. And then the rest of these items here, you really want to talk talk to your owner, uh, the, the, the location owner, and make sure um, they have... Um, you know they've they've communicated to you what what they want you to check off, what they don't want you to use, that kind of thing. Because right now we let you, we let them have the um, the option of choosing these things. This, no discounting would be um, if they uh, if you use an automated discounting like time based discounting. Um, if they're not if they haven't told you about that, then you don't need to worry about that. Never deletes is something that's probably a little bit more important to uh, a lot of people who are going to be resupplying the same inventory over and over. If you use never deletes expires, what that will do is then if your quantity ever reaches zero, it's not going to delete the item and then you have to re-inventory it. So this might be useful for those people who are going to be replenishing the same items over and over. Maybe they um, run... Um, don't replenish it quick enough and they reach a zero quantity. This will this way, um, if you have this checked off, it's not going to delete that item from the system. Um, when it reaches zero, it'll give you a chance to go back and just add quantity instead of re-inventorying the whole thing again. So that might be a useful one for you. Tax, um, leave that checked unless you're told otherwise um, or you're familiar with what, what what's taxable. Um, available online is something that's coming um, hopefully not too long. Um, we'll be able to sell online as well. Um, jewelry label and small label. Again, since these are label sizes, just make sure you've uh, talked to the, uh, the store owner um, to make sure what labels they want you to use. And this means in this video, we're going to talk about the Avery label and show you how to print on that. Let's hit save and close. And now we've got a few items down here. And to print, we're going to print all these. So we're going to select all. 
and then we're going to click the print label button. And since we're using Avery labels, um, up here at the top, you'll see Avery Presta 94103 square labels. Um, I think the last time I looked, it was $23 for like 3,000 labels. Um, so not uh, not a bad deal. Um, and uh, basically just you hit print and it's just going to print on those Avery label sheets. Now when you're, um, let's say in this case, we only have four items. Um, so basically what we can do is next time we print, we can actually click on here and uh, tell rows what position on the sheet to print from. And that way we can continue using the same sheets. We don't have to um, uh, waste labels. Um, so that's a really nice thing that, that this offers. So that is how to uh, create items and print labels using our Avery label um, system.